You can find the web version of Stellarium just by going to the Stellarium website. And up here, you can see it says Stellarium Web, which is right next to the Windows 64-bit download. Stellarium Web will be really good for those with a Chromebook or for anyone that's not able to download and install Stellarium. And just by clicking on it, you're in it. Okay, this is Stellarium Web right here. So I'm going to go through and explain how to use Stellarium Web. Uh, there are many different areas of Stellarium, but so let's just focus quickly. We have the left-hand side, which has view settings, planets tonight. We have the top, which has our search bar and our what we are going to observe. Uh, the bottom right has our time, and the bottom center has a few little gadgets that will affect the display. And the bottom left there, you can see the word says near, that's our location. So let's take a look at the left-hand side. First, you can see the Stellarium Mobile advertisement for their app, which I'll talk to you about in another video. On the top left, you can see View Settings and Planets Tonight. Under View Settings, you have four things that you can turn on or off. You have the Milky Way, which is the dust that you're kind of seeing running through the sky. It's actually a whole bunch of stars really far away that it ends up being looks like milk running across the sky. That's why we call our galaxy the Milky Way. But it's really just nothing but stars just really far away. So DSS stands for Deep Sky. So I'll give you an example of that. Uh, this up here is the Andromeda Galaxy right here, this blue spot. And you can zoom in on it just by scrolling up with the mouse wheel. Uh, and if I do that, if I get in really, really close, it's going to show me the actual galaxy artwork. Uh, so you can kind of see that this is the, the Andromeda Galaxy. But under view settings, if I turn DSS off, it just gets rid of that artwork. So that's what that's doing. I kind of like it. I'm going to leave it on. So the other options in the view settings are the meridian line and the ecliptic line. The meridian line is the line that runs directly uh, up from the north all the way up directly above your head and then all the way back down to south. So it's a line that kind of cuts the sky in half. That's all it does. It's just a good way to know where north and where south is, but it really has nothing to do with the stars. It just kind of shows you where above your head is. The other view that you have is the ecliptic. Now the ecliptic is a special uh, line. It has something to do with the earth being tilted, but what basically happens is that all the planets, the moon and the sun travel very close to the ecliptic and travel across this line here as the night sky goes on. So if you come out tomorrow night or whenever night and someone says, hey, there's a planet up, you know to check along the ecliptic. This is where the planets always are going to be. All right, so the other thing on the left-hand side is the planets tonight. So if you click that, it shows you a bit of a graph here so you can see uh, what planets are coming up. So you can see the sun. I don't know why it's described as a planet, but you can see the sun is here. You can see it sets around, around 6 o'clock is around here, so 5, probably around 4 o'clock. 4 to 5 o'clock is when it sets here. Uh, it sets at 1642, which is 442 p.m. where we're at. Uh, and you can see it rises way over here uh, around just after 6, so around 7. It actually says 7.19 a.m. You can see the moon will be up all tonight. Uh, the dark area is the nighttime. So anything that has a yellow graph in the black area means it will be up at nighttime. So you're going to see Venus uh, for the first part of the night. Jupiter, you can go pretty late into tonight, almost to midnight. Uh, and Saturn, you can go pretty far here too to around probably... Uh, looks like it's tw uh, 2100, so that's uh, 9.38 p.m. And you can see Mars, Mercury uh, will be coming up over the horizon uh, as the morning comes. So you should be able to see them if you get up really early. But, so that's all that shows you. On the left-hand side, there's a bit of about information, uh, privacy, and data, kind of like where they get their star data, but that's it. If you don't want to see this left-hand side, you can click this button here, and it closes that. The next feature right here is the search button. You just type in anything you want. Say I want to look at Mars, type in Mars, hit enter, uh, and it'll show you all the different objects that are associated with that name. So if I click on Mars, it's going to point me directly where Mars is. As you can see, it pointed towards Mars, which is down below the horizon, the western horizon. It's close to the sun. As you can see, the sun is right here. Uh, but yeah, so the Mars is not up right now. And that gives you some information about Mars in terms of its brightness, how far away it is from the Earth, uh, its radius, um, its visibility, a little bit of information about it, and of course, its right ascension, declination, uh, and so on. It tells you, should tell you when it's going to rise or set. There it does, right there. at 6 o 4 a.m. and it sets at uh, 3 59 p.m. so in the middle of the day so that's what that feature does so you can search anything you want 
On the right hand side, FOV stands for field of view. So if you scroll in with your mouse wheel, you are decreasing your field of view, um, which means you're seeing a very narrow part of the sky. And if you scroll out, you can start to see more of the sky all at once until you kind of get this uh, fishbowl effect. So I usually keep it around 90, feels pretty natural. Uh, the observe button here, this is where you can choose to add objects to your journal. So as you look at objects in the night sky, you can add them to your journal, uh, talk about when you saw them, what it was like, uh, what instruments you used when you looked at them, and so on, and it just keeps a record of that. I'm going to close that. The bottom right is the time and location, sorry. The bottom right is your time and date. You can change the time uh, by hitting the uh, up buttons above each one. So you can see as I increase the minutes, you can see the sky is moving. Same thing with the hours, but much more drastic. And of course, you can change the day. So we're changing the day each night here. You can see Jupiter will move closer and closer to the horizon at the same time each night as the days progress. You can also uh, just use a slider here to slide through, uh, through the day and into the night. Uh, and I think you can just click this button and it brings you right back to where you currently were. The features along the bottom have to do with the display. So this area here, again, so if you just click your mouse, you can drag around. The first option here, if you choose that, it's going to show you all the constellations and their lines. The next one's going to show you the artwork on top of the lines. So you can see all the constellation artwork uh, on top of it. So you can see... What do we have here? We have the Big Dipper, which is uh, the Big Bear. So there's the Big Dipper right here, which is actually part of a bigger constellation known as the Ursa Major. Uh, we have the Little Bear, Ursa Minor, and of course that star right there is the North Star. Uh, the next one here is going to turn on or off the atmosphere. So if you click this button, this will turn on or off the atmosphere. So it's not making it nighttime, it's just turning off the sun. Uh, so even though we are still in the evening here, by clicking this button, we're just turning off the sun. This is nice if you want to see what the sky looks like during the daytime. Uh, we'll turn the atmosphere back on, turn off the constellations. Next one's landscape, just gets rid of the ground. So if you want to be able to see below the horizon, you can. And there's two grid systems. We have the alt azimuth grid system. So if we click that, uh, it just kind of shows you that, you know, directly above your head is way up at the top uh, and the horizon would be zero. So uh, this is zero here. This would be up 20 degrees, another 40, uh, 60, um, 80. I believe that's correct. Uh, 20, 40, 60, 80. And then of course, 10 more get you to 90 degrees above your head. Uh, and then you can count how far from north you are going to the right. Okay, and so this one right here, if you click, this is the equatorial grid. What's really nice about the equatorial grid is you can see where the stars are going to go. The equatorial grid does not move in terms of the stars in the background. So I'll show you what I mean. As I increase time, you can see that the equatorial grid turns as well, uh, and the stars are moving with it. So it's more of a grid of outer space. So stars don't really seem to move much in our lifetime. So as I continue to slide this, the stars are not moving on the equatorial grid. Now the North Star is the one that seems to be directly here. And you can see the North Star is actually moving around a very small point. So the North Star actually does move, just not very much at all compared to the other stars. So the further you are from the, the North Celestial Pole, um, the more you move, right? Uh, deep sky objects, you can turn them on or off. So you can see we have the uh, Caldwell 20, which is the North American Nebula. Ne Nebula. We zoom in, you can see the artwork on it. Okay, and if you want to turn off those so that they don't display, you can just click that button and it turns them off. I think that one stayed on because we had it selected. Yeah, that's right. And then night mode, you can turn it so it's red. Okay, this helps your night vision at nighttime. So if you're outside looking at the sky and you're using your uh, you're using this program, it's best to have the night vision on so it allows you to see the nighttime sky. If you keep looking at a white light, when you look up in the sky, you're not going to be able to see any stars. Of course, then you have full screen mode. And all the way to the left, you click that and you can simply type in your location on the Earth so that you'll see the sky the way it's meant to be at your location. And that's it for Stellarium Web. It doesn't have as many features as Stellarium itself, but this is a free, don't need to download anything program. Uh, it's amazing to use if you need to go outside and see what's up uh, quickly at the night sky.